We know it starts at rest. We know the displacement down the driveway because it's on an incline, so it's the displacement in the parallel direction. We know it impedes, um, there's a constant force of kinetic friction of 4,000 newtons that impedes the motion. And we're looking for the velocity final. Clearly, there's friction, so we're going to use work due to friction equals the change in mechanical energy or the force due to kinetic friction times the displacement times the cosine of theta equals mechanical energy final minus mechanical energy initial. Before we can move on in, we must. Ah, uh, actually, no. You actually don't need to draw a free body diagram in order to move on. There's an instance is actually where you wouldn't need to draw a free body diagram and see if this is one. Victoria. Um, the initial final zero. Remember, anytime you're going to use this, just like conservation of mechanical energy, you need to identify your initial and your final points and the zero line. So we have our vehicle, it starts somewhere up here. We'll put that as our initial point. Our final point will be at the base of the incline, and we'll set our zero line at the height of the final point. Starting on the far right, mechanical energy initial. Nick, walk me through the three different types of mechanical energy initial that could possibly be there, and which ones are zero, and which ones are not. Uh, okay, so there's kinetic energy, but then there, well, there is an velocity initial zero. Good, the initial velocity is zero, kinetic energy is initial is zero. Okay, so gravitational potential energy you do have. And then there is no uh, elastic, then elastic potential energy. Because there's no spring. There's no spring, so no elastic potential energy. So the only type of mechanical energy that we start with is the initial mechanical energy. Matt Olenek, mechanical energy final. What type of energy does the car end with? Kinetic. Okay, ends with kinetic energy because? Because it's moving. What about the other two? Because the height final is zero and there's no spring. So no height final, so the gravitational potential energy is zero, and no spring, so no elastic potential energy. So we end with one half m v final squared. Okay, on the left hand side, a lot of you are going to feel tempted to plug in mu k times the force normal for this force of kinetic friction. I want you to tell me why you're not going to do that at this time, Matt. Because we already have our force of kinetic friction. We. We get into habits, right? Ooh, I see the force kinetic friction. We can substitute mu k times force normal for it. But don't forget what you know and what you're trying to find. In this particular case, we don't want to substitute in, or we don't want to substitute in mu k times force normal for the force kinetic friction because we already have a number for it. So we have force of kinetic friction. The displacement we've identified as the delta d parallel, and I'm just going to put the cosine of theta for now. Looking from left to right. We actually know everything with the exception of the velocity final and what other item. What's the other thing we do not know in this equation? Tom? Delta D parallel. Uh, actually, we do know delta D parallel. It's 5.0 meters. There's one other thing we do not know. Stuart? The height initial. The height initial. This piece right here, we do not know. How are we going to find the height initial? Uh, Nick? You can do the sine of theta equals obstacle of the height. Equals the height initial over the delta d parallel. Opposite our theta, we have height initial. On the hypotenuse, we have delta d parallel. Therefore, the height initial equals the displacement in the parallel direction times the sine of theta. So we can now write out our long equation here with all variables and we can start substituting it. So force kinetic friction times delta d parallel times the cosine of theta equals one half mass times velocity final squared minus mg times delta d parallel times the sine of theta. From left to right, please give me all of the numbers. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's not even from me. It's okay. Unless you need a recommendation, I'd be oh, more than happy to write Really? Something. That's awesome. I will keep that in mind. 
From left to right, Hoover. Start giving me numbers, please. Delta V parallel? Times the cosine of? Equals one half times the mass. 2100 times velocity final, which we're looking for, squared minus the mass, 2100 as you said, times g, times delta d parallel, times the sine of, which is? I uh, know, sine of theta. Yeah. Oh, 20. 20. Which is? Um, should the first cosine of theta be cosine of 100 degrees? You have to be really careful keeping track of your theta. You are absolutely correct. Notice this theta right here comes from our work equation. This angle is the angle between the force kinetic friction and the displacement, which is 180 degrees. This angle, which we got from taking the sine of theta, which equals the opposite over hypotenuse, is the angle of the incline. So just please be very careful with your angle. So we now have all the numbers. We just need to rearrange it to solve for velocity final. So we get 4,000 times 5 times negative 1, which is cosine 180. We'll add the 2,100, et cetera, to both sides. And we have then 1050 times velocity final squared. Velocity final equals this giant mess, 4,000 times 5, the negative of, plus our 2100, times 9.8, times the 5, times the sine of 20, divided by the 1050, that whole thing, the square root of. I'm not going to worry about the plus or minus because this is actually just how fast is it going at the bottom is all it asks. But again, realize that we don't get a direction from the equations itself. We do know the direction that's going down the incline. We even know the angle of the incline. But all of that is irrelevant because they just ask how fast is it moving at the bottom. 